Welcome to Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm your host, Lori Fagan. In this podcast series, I'll interview authors who will then read their mystery, suspense, or thriller short stories or a chapter from their published books. In addition, sprinkled throughout the coming weeks, the podcast will feature radio theater style sections from the audiobooks for my three crime fiction novels. There will be prizes too, so stick around to the end to find out how to enter. We're back with the fun radio theater style mystery. Here are more episodes of Frightful Fun House. You've landed on the compilation of the Radio Theater Style Mystery Podcast from my audiobook for Fade Out called Frightful Fun House. It's about a young couple who thinks they're in for fun and games at a local carnival, but the fun house is anything but. When, among the undulating floors and wacky mirrors, they stumble across a dead woman. Enjoy Frightful Fun House. <laughs> Welcome back once again to Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm Lauren Price. In the Frightful Fun House, our carnival couple, Brad and Liz, slid down a long, dark chute into a ball pit and are now desperately trying to get out. What could be behind the door that says, in sanatorium? Come on, Liz. That looks like the only exit. I don't know, Brad. What's an in sanatorium anyway? Well, it's probably... Oh, heck, it's just a name to get us freaked out. Well, they're doing a good job of it. Brad reaches for the doorknob. I, I don't see anything, Liz. Looks like it's empty. What the? Brad is interrupted when a light comes on behind a portion of the wall, showing a clear glass partition. Something or someone is inside. Brad, what? Who? Who is that? Ladies and gentlemen, step right up for the most unbelievable, truly unusual, but absolutely real human oddities you have ever seen. A young boy with an enormously distended face steps forward toward the glass. He has a huge mass of skin growing on the right side of his face that reaches down to his waist. His right eye is buried under the extra folds of flesh, nodules, lumps, and growths. Oh my god! Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Elephant Boy. He suffers from a rare hereditary disorder that used to be known as Elephantitis, but now is known as Proteus Syndrome. It results in an overgrown skin, an abnormally large head, giant feet, and darkened moles. Because of the size and weight of his head, estimated to be about 23 pounds, he must always sleep sitting up. If he doesn't, the weight of his head will crush his windpipe and suffocate him. The boy steps back away from the glass and the light goes out. We gotta look for another way out, Liz. See if you can... Another light illuminates yet another partition across the room. A woman with four legs and four arms and a second torso is seated in a chair. Hindu goddess or skeletal abnormality. Makisha was born with four legs, four arms, and a headless torso. Extra limbs from a parasitic twin that never developed properly. <laughs> Brad, I can't take this. How do we get out of here? I don't know, Liz. I don't see how... Again, the light goes out. Across the room, another light comes on, but this time the partition is empty. And Brad and Liz see a body lying crumpled on the floor in front of the glass. The carny voice begins, but the tape sounds like it's warped, running at different speed. Sweden is a grotesque sight to see. His arms and legs are covered with woolly growths. It's an out-of-control virus. Brad, that looks like... It's a woman. I think she's... dead. Is it just another diabolical sideshow freak? Or have Liz and Brad discovered the victim of a horrendous crime? Stay tuned next time for another podcast of Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. 
Thanks for listening. This is Lauren Price. The Frightful Fun House lost its sense of humor long ago, and Brad and Liz desperately attempt to find a way out. However, they've been stuck in an insanatorium where sideshow freaks are on display. The freak show comes to an end when our carnival couple discovers an unconscious woman beside the glass. Is she? I mean, do you think? Liz and Brad creep slowly toward the older woman immobile on the floor, whose hand appears to be clutching her throat. She's dressed in polyester pants and a sweatshirt and has white curly hair. A walking cane lies not far from her body. On TV, they always touch somewhere on the neck, but I'm not sure what they're feeling for. He gets down on his knees and bends over the woman to see if he can hear her breathing. He gently touches her hand and retracts his own quickly. Oh, God, she's cold. Jesus Christ. I think she's... God damn it, we have to find help and get out of here. Help! Help! We need help here! Hey! Brad? Where'd you go? Brad! Suddenly, it's only Liz and the dead woman in the room. Has there been a murder? Or did the frightful funhouse scare this woman to death? And where did Brad disappear to again? Join us next time for another Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm Lauren Price. Thanks for listening. Welcome back to Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm Lauren Price. Tonight on Frightful Fun House, our carnival couple find themselves in the Ensanatorium with a human sideshow behind glass walled rooms and a real life dead body. On top of that, Brad disappears. Brad, where the hell are you? This better not be some joke. Spotting a door inside the glass booth, Liz picks up the old woman's cane and starts pounding on the clear walls. Hey, someone, anyone, I need some goddamn help. We need to get out of... With that, her last blow with the cane cracks the glass and shards fly. Liz looks back at the old woman on the floor, gingerly steps across the threshold and opens the door. Liz steps into a long and narrow hallway, obviously not part of the fun house, with paper cups strewn on the floor, a mop and bucket along one wall, and regular lighting hanging from the ceiling. Brad, are you here? Anyone? Liz goes to the end of the hallway where she nervously puts her hand on the doorknob and slowly turns it. The door opens into a small office with a desk, chair, fake plastic plant, and a small older man sitting at the table, paper ledgers in front of him, running a calculator. He looks up in surprise. With one hand, he slams shut an open desk drawer. Who are you? And how did you get in here? Oh, thank God. We we were trapped in the funhouse. My boyfriend's missing and there's a dead woman in there. You have to help. Oh my, this is so bizarre. I, I, this is, this is never. Oh, call 911, you idiot. Liz looks frantically for a phone. When she doesn't see one, she pulls out her cell to check for service. Damn, why can't I get a signal? And why don't you have a telephone here? We're always on the road. We don't have a telephone line. Only in the main office. Uh, And where is that? Would you please take me there? The man signals that he'll follow her out the door. But once Liz steps out of the hallway, the man quickly closes the door behind her and turns the lock. What the? Why, you little piece of... Open up right now! (laughs) But the door stays closed. Why won't the little man help her? How is Liz going to get assistance, and how can she find Brad? Come back next time for another Murder in the Air Mystery Theater episode. I'm Lauren Price. Good night. The Frightful
Crystal Fun House is becoming a house of horrors for Liz when she can't find her boyfriend and the little man she discovers in an office won't call for aid. Where is everyone? Why won't anyone help? A woman wearing a white coat carrying a clipboard steps out. Oh, thank God you gotta help me. I can't find my boyfriend and there's a dead body in the sanatorium. That's impossible, young lady. How on earth did you get out here? Through, through that door, right? I mean, down there. Liz turns, pointing down the hall in different directions, not sure herself. All she sees are long, solid walls. There are no doors there, dear. But there was the old lady. She was in the freak sideshow room, and there was a little man in an office at the other end of the hall, but, but, but he wouldn't. When she looks down the hall, there is only a wall at the end. Now, dear, why don't you come with me and we'll sort this all out. The woman leads Liz back through the door. They go into what looks like a doctor's office. A tall man with a shock of white hair, also wearing a long white coat, stands. Doctor, this woman appears to be lost. No, no, I'm, I, I don't know where I am, but it's my boyfriend who's lost. And we were, I saw terrible, horrible things. <laughs> there, there, my dear, everything will be all right. Have a drink of water, miss. It, it's Liz. I, I don't know what's going on. Red, where are you? Has Liz stumbled into the frightful fun house's twilight zone? Things just aren't what they should be. Or are they? Find out next time on Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm Lauren Price. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lori Fagan. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Frightful Fun House from Fade Out in my Behind the Mic Mysteries. The full story is about a young radio reporter, Lisa Powers, who covers the crime beat for her Chandler, Arizona radio station, helps police solve cold cases because she's interested and they're short-staffed, and who writes campy murder mystery radio theater style podcasts in her spare time. The Murder in the Air podcasts are written under Lisa's pen name, Lauren Price. I gathered actors in a studio and, along with my audio producer's son, Devin Hancock, created sound effects, added music, and just had a great time recording these episodes. Characters were performed by actors Robert Diepenbrock, Sherry Hildebrand Whitney, Brian Whitney, Kathy Beard, Andrea Ballou, and I read the narrator part of Lauren Price. Next time on episode number five of Murder in the Air Mystery Theater, join us when author Howard Gershkowitz reads from his medical thriller, Not on My Watch. Episode number six will feature more from the audiobook Frightful Fun House. And join us on episode number seven when Cheryl Cocroft talks about her contemporary fiction, Spoken Words. If you are listening on the podcast platform of your choice, please subscribe and leave a review or provide us with some feedback. If you're on YouTube at Read Lori Fagan, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and click on the bell to be notified when a new episode has been released. And for more freebies, check out our Patreon page at Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. Remember I mentioned prizes? At the end of each of these Murder in the Air podcasts, we'll have a drawing for a prize from those who follow Read Lori Fagan on Facebook or Instagram, and in the comment, write Murder to be entered in a drawing. We'll have drawings for free ebooks, chances to win your name in a novel, and other fun items. So go to Facebook or Instagram, follow Read Lori Fagan, and write Murder in the comment. For more information, you can visit readlorifagan.com. Thanks so much for listening and come back again for more Murder in the Air. Murder in the Air.